Hi, my name is Avilash and I'm from Selenium Express. So today in this tutorial, we're going to talk about one of the very, very, very important topic in Java called non-static variables. Well guys, I know, I know if you're a beginner or if you're coming from a non-computer science background, this war may be going to be a little technical for you guys. But guys, trust me, it's a very simple topic. Well, but I must say, I found this topic a little challenging for a lot of beginners out there. But don't worry, we are going to cover every word part of it. So before we go further, let's have a look on the contents of this video. So first we'll see how to identify a non-static variable and we'll cover some basics about it. Then we're going to talk about how the non-static variables will get the memory space and what happens behind the scene when you create an object. Once we'll have some basics, we're gonna get our hands dirty by doing some core and we'll do it all from the scratch. Then I'll show you some animations and we'll make you understand how to call non-static variables to a non-static or to a static context. And finally, we're going to learn when to declare a non-static variable and the limitation of it. So, if you find hard to understand non-static variables in Java, then sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. So guys, before we go ahead and before we start talking about non-static variable, I have a question for you guys. You know, first, let me ask you one question. That what do you understand about an object? Because you know, the object and the non-static variable have a very close relation. If you do not understand about object, you can understand non-static variable, okay? So just tell me, what do you understand about the object? Well, what do you mean by that? A lot of people say the object means instance of a class. So object is an instance of a class. Well, I understand that. But what do you mean by that instance? So instance mean dynamic memory allocation. So, object means instance of a class and instance means dynamic memory allocation. Then what do you mean by dynamic memory allocation? Dynamic memory allocation, as the name suggests, dynamically allocate memory. To whom? To the non-static members of a class. Okay? So, object in Java means allocating the memory space to the non-static members of a class is called object. Okay? Okay, wait. Allocating the memory to who? Allocating the memory to non-static members, right? So we are reading about that, right? Non-static members and non-static variables are kind of non-static members, right? So let's figure that out. Now let me declare some non-static members, right? Okay, if we talk about non-static members, it can be a non-static variable, it can be a non-static block, it can be a non-static method, okay but over here we are talking about non-static variables okay so I, I'm only taking the example of non-static variables over here okay so let me declare a class so I'll say class and my class name is test so I'm opening my class over here and closing it over here okay let me let me take a student okay my class name is student let's say student that's it okay so now let me declare some non-static variable over here. I'll say int id and int mark. So I have two variables, id and mark. Okay, and both have int type and they are non-static variables. Now you got a question in your mind. How the heck this is non-static variable? How did you figure it out? Guys, it's very simple. See, this mark is what? My variable name, right? So if my variable is preceded by a keyword called static, then this is a static variable, okay? If I'm just omitting the static over here, if I'm removing the static over here, this has become non-static. So if a variable is preceded by a keyword called static, then it's a static variable. So now mark is a static variable because it is preceded by the keyword called static. But id is a non-static variable because it does not have static keyword before it. But mark has the static keyword before it. So it is static, this is non-static. So if I remove static over here before mark, then this becomes non-static. 
because there is no static keyword before it, isn't it? So if a variable is not preceded by the keyword called static, then it's a non-static variable. So you just need to figure it out. Static is written over here before mark? No. So it's a non-static. Okay, that's it. Now let me declare some methods over here. I know you're a beginner and if you do not know what is a method and all this, don't worry. Our point is to understand the non-static variable, okay? We'll have separate session to understand about methods, okay? But for now, let me take some methods over here. Let me say void m1, open and close, void m2, open and close. So, point number one, if a variable is declared inside a class but outside of all the methods and not preceded by the keyword called static, then it's a non-static variable. Hear it again. If a variable is present inside a class or declared inside a class, but outside of all the functions and not preceded by the keyword static, then it's a non-static variable. Okay, you can take a note of it. Okay, so now let me have a flashback. So we learned about objects few minutes back, right? We understand the definition. So object means allocating the memory space for the non-static members of a class, okay? Now let's understand this technically, okay? So for that, let me remove these methods, okay? And let me write a main method over here because we need to create some object, right? So let me write public static void main and string argument right let me open it over here and close it over here now let me create few objects for my class student okay so i'll say student which is my class name i'll say frank which is my reference equal to new student all right so I created a student object named Frank. So what happens internally? A object is created inside the memory. Okay, let me remove this thing. All right. So internally, a object is created and its reference is Frank. Okay, so Frank refers to this object. So now let's come back to the definition. Whenever we create a object of a class, what happens? All the non-static members, all the non-static members gets the memory, okay? So now, here id and mark gets the memory. Now, can you guess what's the value of id and what's the value of mark? Well, I haven't set over here any value. If I set id equal to 10 and mark equal to 99, then here id will be 10 and mark will be 99. But I haven't set any value over here, right? I haven't set anything over here, right? So now what will be with the value over here? Because JVM will put some value over here, right? id equal to what value? So you know what? So whenever you set a ringtone in your phone and somebody calls you, you obviously hear that sound. But if you didn't set a ringtone and somebody calls you, there should be a default ringtone, right? And you'll hear that sound. So like that, if you're not putting some values over here, if you're not setting your non-static variables, JVM will set the value for your non-static variable according to your data type. So for example, for in data type, the JVM will set zero value, right? So my ID will be zero and mark will be zero. So what we understand from here, Whenever a object is created for a class, all the non-static variable will get memory space. So guys, now I'm going to do something, right? You just try to answer me, right? Suppose I'm going to use over here static int, let's say mobile, okay? So I have a variable called mobile, mob, which is of static type. So just tell me, whenever this prank object will be created in the memory, suppose this is the memory, and this object is created okay so now when the when this object is created this mobile will get the memory space or not can i write mobile equal to zero so is it going to take part during the time of object creation 
Absolutely not, right? Because it is static time, right? Just remember the definition of object. During the time of the object creation, only non-static variables, only non-static members will get the memory, okay? So remember this point, whenever the object is created, at that time only, the non-static variable is going to get the memory, okay? Okay, so let me remove this mobile from here. Now we have ID and mark. So we have created a student object. So an object is created in the memory and all the non-static variables are getting the memory, okay? So guys, before I go ahead and cover another point about non-static variable, just let me tell you guys, do you know what is this? What is this new? This new is dynamic memory allocation operator okay so actually what's happening whenever you're creating the object how much memory this non-static variable will take you are not deciding that you are not allocating the memory somebody is allocating the memory for you right and that somebody is compiler JVM so JVM allocates the memory dynamically okay and how much memory your variables are going to take that is going to be decided by the new QR. So without new QR, you cannot create the object. So the role of the new QR over here is that whenever an object will be created, new QR is going to decide how much memory will be assigned to your non-static variables. It's very, very important. So the new QR is assigning memory dynamically, right? During your runtime, right? When your program is running, at the time, new QR is assigning the memory space to all the non-static variables, all the non-static members, and then only your object is getting created, okay? I hope this point is clear, right? Okay, so now let's talk about another point, all right? So now let's say, let me get rid of all this thing. Okay, so. So now let's say there is a, another student, right? There, there is a, another student who want to enroll with me. So I need to create a, another student object, right? So let me say student and my student name is let's say Bob. So reference is Bob equal to new student. That's it. Object is created. So when the object is created, do you know what's going to happen? A another object will be created in the memory. Okay. And this object reference is Bob, right? So I'll write Bob and it will be reference to that variable right this bar variable now whenever a object is created what usually happens is gives the memory space to all the non-static variable so bobs will have separate id and separate mark all right so i haven't assigned it to any values so right now for now the values will be zero so the point over here is with respect to each object creation, a separate copy of memory is allocated for all the non-static variable. See, for this student, this is the object. It has a separate ID and mark. For this student, this is the object. It has separate ID and mark, right? So if another student will come, another object will be created in the memory, right? So let's say this is the memory. So another object will be created, okay? And it will have separate ID and mark. So for each student, a separate copy of memory is allocated for its non-static variables, right? So this is the point number three. So now it's time for our last point, okay? And if you see over here, ID and mark, okay? We have only declared it, but we're never using it, right? We haven't set any value to it. So if you see over here, Frank will have a different ID, different mark. Bob will have a different ID and different mark, isn't it? So how to use this variable, how to call this variable to over here? And that's the thing that you need to understand. So that's really, really important. So now I want to walk you through a slide. And in this slide, I'll make you understand how to call non-static variable from a different context, like a static context and a non-static context, okay? So now you have a look, okay? So let's say you have your non-static variables, all right? And you have your non-static method, okay? So now what you want to do, you want to call this non-static variables to this non-static method, okay? So you want to have a call. So you just need to remember, the non-static variables, K, 
can be called to the non-static methods directly okay so you can have a direct call okay so remember it the non-static variables can be called to a non-static method directly all right okay so let's walk through this example let's say I have this class okay I this thing is my class area okay and inside my class I have two non-static variables like ID and mark and both are set to zero all right so now let's say I have a non-static method inside my class which is m1 and there is no static keyword before it so this is non-static so now I want to call this non-static variables to my non-static method okay so if I want to call this non-static variable to this non-static method as I said we can have a direct call we can call it directly okay so let's see how so first I want to call the ID okay so what I want to do I want to call the ID and instead of zero I want to set it some value okay so I can do it like this ID equal to 12 so you can see over here it's a direct call right I'm not using any reference nothing I'm just using the name which is ID and I'm assigning it to some value which is 12 pretty simple isn't it so similarly if I want to call mark then how can I do that I can directly say mark equal to 99 so what do we understand from here the non-static variables can be called to a non-static method directly you can have a note of it okay so now let's see a different scenario let's say we have a non-static variable or we have some non-static variables and we have a static method okay so I want to call these non-static variables to a static method so how can I do that well this time you have to remember you cannot you just cannot call the non-static variables to a static method so there is no direct call all right so to make you understand this I want to walk you through an example all right so now let's see it again let's say this is my class area okay this is my class and inside my class I have two variables which is non-static ID and mark and both are set to zero all right and I have a method and this time this method is static so this m1 method is static all right so now I want to call this ID and mark to my static method all right so as I said we just cannot call our non-static variables which is ID and mark to our static method and if you want to do it you'll get compilation error okay this is not at all possible so then how can we do that so to do this thing first we need to create the object of that class where we want to access the non-static variables so first I need to create the class object right which is class name then a reference which is obj then equal to new class name all right so now if I want to call ID so how can I do that using the class reference which is obj I can assign the ID and mark just like this obj dot ID equal to 12 now ID is set to 12 and if I want to access mark and you want to assign that then I can do like this obj dot mark equal to 99 very simple so you just need to remember the non-static variable cannot be called to a static method or, or to a static context directly but if you want to access non-static variable from a static method what you need to do you need to create the object of a class and using the reference you can access the non-static variables all right so I think you have the fundamentals right now let's walk to our classroom again so now you can see we have created the object for Frank and Bob but but this ID and mark both set to zero because we haven't initialized it. Because all students will have a different ID and different mark. So we cannot hard code it, right? So now let me assign the value for Frank's ID and mark. And similarly for Bob's ID and mark. So first of all, just tell me, can I call this ID directly to over here? Can I say ID is equal to 20? First of all, whose ID? Bob's ID? or Frank's ID. We're not defining anything, right? And the second thing, can you see the main method is static, right? And we cannot call a non-static variable to a static method directly, right? And if we want to call, we need to create the object. 
object of which class object of that class from what you need to access its non static variables so here i'm looking for which class student class right so i have already created the student class object student frank equal to new student okay so now frank is what frank is my reference variable right so using the reference variable i can say frank dot id equal to 2 and frank dot mark equal to 99 so what will happen so this id will be 2 and mark will be 99 similarly for bob if you need to set the id and mark what do you need to do you need to write bob bob is the student reference i mean bob is the student class reference so bob dot id equal to 3 bob dot mark equal to suppose 70 now bob id will be 3 and mark will be 70 very simple right so now let's say if i need to create another student right if i need to create another student object so if i write student as suppose sham equal to new student then what will happen can you guess it right now so another object will be created for sham right so in the memory another object will be created with the reference sham the so sham will be assigning to this isn't it so now as soon as the object will be created it will assign the memory space for its non-static variables for id and for mark so initially it will be set to 0 because we are not defining it now let's define it now let's say sham dot id equal to 3 and sham dot mark equal to 95 now what will happen id will be 3 and mark will be 95 i hope the point is clear right now isn't it okay so before i wrap up this session one last question when we need to create non-static variables when do java recommend us to create a non-static variable right so again i'll be i'll be having a separate tutorial for that once i cover the static uh, variables in java but for this timing you just remember this much the data which is going to be different for each object is going to be non-static okay for example for frank the id and mark is different for bob the id and mark is different and for sham the id and mark is different in this case we just need to go for non-static variables okay because the data is different for different objects isn't it but for example if i'll declare a another int type variable let's say int college id okay college underscore id and you know that the college id will be same for each student so i'm assigning it over here suppose college id equal to 101 okay so now let's see what's happened okay so whenever you created frank's object okay so the id and mark will be different but the college id is same right and it's already assigned so here college underscore id will come and this value will be 101 similarly when you create another student object that is bob for bob also this will take memory right because during the time of object creation all the non-static variables will be get the memory space right so here call is underscore id will come as 101 similarly for sham call is underscore id will be 101 so you can see over here this data is same everywhere right so the thing is with respect to each object creation if this is our non-static variable each time while a separate copy of memory is allocating for a non-static variable this is also coming within it isn't it so for example there will be 100 student object like this so this college id will come 100 times isn't it which is memory wastes so you don't need to waste your memory right by creating the same thing again and again with each object 
So don't declare unnecessarily a non-static variable if it is not needed, right? Well, we'll be talking about this in my later session, but for today, this is it.